Hello, I'm Simon Christie and welcome to another big episode of 4 Drive TV. Let's get stuck into it. Fred lightly, keep it safe, play hard. He's nearing 80. They've just entered their teens. He's worked the last 65 years as a mechanical engineer. They play video games. Kids in my day never got away with things like that. Brought up in two completely different worlds. Them and hairdo looks like a mop. There is one interest they have in common. Four-wheel drives. Tune in to see whether these juniors can withstand the heat and put up with Alan. And you missed a bit back here. The old school way is to start from the bottom up. You know what a broom is? You've seen a broom before? Don't pick up too much of the dust either because I'm having my morning tea. And you missed a bit back here. Bloom and hairdo looks like it's been in a birch broom and a mop. You've been watching too much television. Kids in my day never got away with things like that. I don't know what the world's coming to. I might have a bit of a nap myself in a minute too. Eventually, Al gives the boys a break to teach them about using their heads, not only their tools. Some of the things you come across when you're a four-wheel drive specialist will be problems, people come in with all sorts of things. A lot of your time will be taken up, unfortunately, just finding out what the problem is. Once you ask the right question and learn to ask the right questions, remembering about the experience you've had before, you'll often narrow it down to just one or two simple things. Eh? What other sort of problems have you come across? Worn clutches. Worn clutches, yeah. So that has to be pretty bad. It's a funny smell as well? Yeah. <laughs> yeah funny smell, yeah. What do you reckon? Do you come across any any problems in your... Truck didn't start once. Truck didn't start. Did you find a reason for it? Yeah. Yeah. How did you, how did you find the reason? Uh, expected all the fuel lines. Oh, yeah. You found some kind of problem there? Yeah. And that's the difference. To think with your head as well as working with your tools. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's not hard. Yeah. Let's go. Now we're talking about, I don't know, there's no, nothing against hurrying. Just hang on about half a minute. Look at that. Make sure you get a guard cover over everything you're working on, right? Now, tell me, what do you think in low power? We're looking at low power this time. This is an earlier vehicle. What, what sort of things do we look at? Uh, faulty connections. Faulty oh, connections? Yeah, yeah it could be. No. You can get some bad connections down there. What do you, what do you reckon? The timing's not right. The timing, yeah. Okay, we'll have a look at the timing. We've got a timing light there. What else? You've some, come across some other problems, haven't you? Yeah, the fuel filter. Fuel filter, yeah. So what happens with the fuel filter? Uh, it can get clogged. Clogged up. So what does that do? Uh, it means the fuel can't get through as easily. Not enough fuel to run the car. Do you reckon that sounds it? Makes sense? <laughs> you want to undo the, uh, the plug? Al gets the boys to check the spark plugs first. Yeah, make sure you grab the, make sure you grab the rubber and not the lead like you did. That's good. Otherwise, because there's no wire in here. Shut up. Hang on, <laughs> you did that on purpose, didn't you? Once James pulls out the spark plug, Al inspects it for damage. What do you reckon? Not too hot? No. Okay. The gap should be around about a millimetre, that's pretty good. And it's not all, all worn away, I just put that back. You don't fiddle around with it too much. They've got carbon and, and cotton in there, and if you move it around, it'll loosen that and the resistance will go through the roof and you'll have a misfire. The boys use a multimeter sure to right test the right resistance right. of the spark plug lead. 4.38, but you'll generally find them around 4, 5, 6, 7, like that. When you get to 10, 15, throw them out, OK? Because it will make a big difference. All right, so that's, that's pretty good. Now it's time to move on to testing the timing of the FJ. So just uh, when anybody starts a motor, always stand just out of the back, just in case I make a mistake, because it's very hard to uh, shout when you're underneath the car. Now we'll hook this little induction thing on, this will pick up the spark. Alan connects to the number one cylinder. In there, just hook it over the thing, it'll pick it up, and we'll get some power to run this. Okay, so we've got right on earth there, 
in there and if we press this it'll flash don't look at it okay now that'll flash every time there's a spark now every time it fires on there we want to know when it fires okay so there's a little ball in the flywheel down the bottom and a little hole for you to watch it now, can you guys see that ball see those pointer for the timing to be correct the ball you can see should be right next to the pointer. It is in fact too far down, so Alan moves the ball into its correct positioning. Alan adjusts the ball by loosening and tightening the clamp on the distributor to be top dead centre, or to where the manual suggests. This will now ensure optimum power is supplied to the vehicle. Well, what do you guys reckon? Did you learn anything today? Yeah. Right, so we'll leave it again for today. That's pretty good. Happy about that? Catch yep. you later. Thanks, Al. Yeah, thanks for today. Okay, no worries. Later, guys. Hi, my name is Mark Noble from Aussie Drink Mate. The Aussie Drink Mate is a new product on the market at this stage. We've had some fantastic responses for it. It's been part of the giveaways for Four Wheel Drive TV. It's a powder coated metal stake that goes into the ground with a drink holder attachment on the top. And the drink holder attachment can hold different things cans, stubbies, mugs through to wine bottles, wine glasses. It even has a bowl holder that clips onto the steak with a bowl that goes into it just for your nibble products and like your chips and your nuts, etc. You can purchase extra bowls to go on it for different nibble products for yourselves. There's different uses for the Aussie Drink Mate. Um, you can use it when you're going four-wheel driving or camping, so putting it right next to your deck chairs when you're camping or at the beach, fishing as well putting it into the sand or into the water close to you so you can have your fishing rod where the wine glass holder sits and also have your drinks there as well. So basically, no matter what you're doing outside, this will definitely suit your needs. Holden's toughest 4x4 ever has arrived. Introducing the all-new Holden Colorado 7. It comes with seven seats as standard and it's loaded with serious off-road grunt. You'll get three-ton towing and the awesome 470 newton meter Duramax diesel engine, plus an impressive wading depth and hill descent control, all for the hardcore adventurer. The all-new Holden Colorado 7 is here. Take it off-road at your Holden dealer today. 30 second kitchen, a kitchen in 30 seconds. Fridge slide first. Fridge slide's got 130 kilo tracks in it, so it's nice and tough. Remove the R clip, don't lose it. Drop the pin, leg locker. Kitchen now. Lock kitchen down here. Retrieve the R clip, lock on here, R clip in. Leg here, leg here. Pull them together. Stove, Billy. How good's that, guys? Couldn't ask for quicker. I'm Chris Weston, off-road racer and owner of Off-Road Rush, and I wouldn't race on anything else than my Mickey Thompson tyres. I trust my Mickey Thompson at high speed. They can handle wet or dry without any trouble. And that means I can keep racing while the competitors stop to change tyres. Mickey Thompson? No wonder they call them legendary. Call 1300 Mickey for your nearest dealer. Four wheel drive here. We're out at Dalston Footy Oval Mud Race Track. It should be an awesome day. The crowd's filling out already and it's still early. I'm Clint Red from Reddy's 4x4 and we're here at Dalston for the 2013 race. 
big turnout this year. Got heaps of crowd coming, got the tracks really good, the pit area is really nice. Got a lot of new competition, there's GQs coming out of woodwork everywhere, getting cut down and tarped up and ready to race. A lot of big V8s, all these boys with their big toys. Biggest field of mud races and road registered cars I've seen for a long time. So looking forward to a fantastic day. The tracking has been here for about 13 years now and every year we give it a bit of a tidy up and that this year it's had a really good tidy up with an excavator from the local contractor. It's my favourite track. It's looking very dry actually so it should mean for some really fast racing and the track will probably get really rough by the end of the day so it'll be a test to see if your car can survive the day. But looking forward to it a lot. It should be a great day. It's always a fantastic day. You've got grassy hills, you've got kids rides, you've got clowns, we've got a jukebox, we've got a really good DJ this time for commentating. So it really makes a big day down here. It's a great day to come down at one thing with the kids and get involved. It should be really fast racing. We're running the hybrid today, the old LS42, big block TB42. We had a bit of a downfall with a couple of plug leads at Shepparton and let the Bidwell Smurfs come out and beat us. She's on for, for young and old for this one. Hopefully we can carry on what we did last time where Brendan and I won modified and super modified class. That'd be pretty cool if we could do that again. But the day ain't over yet, we'll see how it works out. If we all run right, we figure we've got the pup, we've got the Bidwell, we've got ready 4x4. So we're all running exactly the same cars with exactly the same motors. So it's just like go-kart racing, we're going to get out there and if all cars don't break down, we should be within 100 seconds of each other. So it should be a really good pushy day. I'm Chris Roberts from Me Mother 4 Wheel Drive Products. I'm quite often asked about how to use my winch, how do I safely do a four wheel drive recovery and what sort of situations will I find myself in. So I'm going to run you through some basic recovery procedures and some ways that these winches work. So the thing to remember with the four wheel drive recovery winch is that the rating of that winch is rated on your first layer. So a 9,500 pound winch is rated on the first layer of that drum so if you're doing a recovery and your anchor point is only five metres away, you're only going to be pulling out about five metres of cable, which means you're going to have around four cable layers on that drum and your winch capacity is considerably less. So you need to consider how much weight you've got in your vehicle and what you're going to be recovering, how far stuck you are, how deep your vehicle is in, what sort of ground you're on. The first layer of your drum is going to be your maximum pulling capacity, but at your lowest speed. The more cable you get onto your spool, the less capacity, the less pulling power this winch is going to have, but this winch is going to operate at a much faster speed. So you've got the winch installed in your four-wheel drive. It's important that you learn how to use it. There's a lot of accessories that enhance the performance of your winch, and some of the things that you could certainly buy and consider buying are snatch blocks, tree trunk protectors, winch extension cables, and recovery dampeners. I'll just run you through some basic reasons why you'll need those accessories to enhance the performance of your winch. A tree trunk protector is used to first and foremost protect the environment, protect the tree, but also will stop you from bringing the cable back around onto itself and damaging the winch cable. A winch extension strap is used when the cable supplied on the winch is not long enough to reach your anchor point. In this situation, using a winch extension strap to extend the length out to your anchor point is going to be important to use. Using a snatch block in a recovery is going to half the capacity on the winch. A snatch block is important if you're carrying a heavy load or you're stuck quite deep. It can mean the difference of getting home at 5 o'clock or getting home at 10 o'clock. It's a vital piece of equipment to have in your four-wheel drive. The recovery dampener is an extremely important piece of safety equipment in a winch. If that wire cable snaps, it becomes an extremely dangerous situation. That cable is going to twing back at an extremely high rate of knots. If you dampen the load with the use of a good quality dampener, it's going to reduce the risk of injury of yourself, reduce the risk of damaging your vehicle, and keep the bystanders safe. When performing a recovery, create a safety zone. Make sure all your bystanders and family are outside of that safety zone. The use of hand signals is going to help in a recovery to let people know when the winch is under load and what you're doing and what the, you, the operator who has a responsibility 
is doing in controlling this device. No recovery kit is complete without a good set of leather gloves. When handling wire rope, always use hand protection to eliminate the possibility of cuts from burrs or splinters in that wire cable. Before every use of the winch, inspect the cable for loose burrs, strands or any damage. If there's any signs of damage on that wire rope or synthetic rope, replace it immediately. Remembering, winches operate at high capacities and exert a lot of forces onto those cables. When resetting your winch, make sure when you're pulling the cable back in, keep your fingers, loose clothing and any other articles clear of the roller fair lead. So if you find your anchor point is a long way away from your winch, you're going to need to use a lot of cable. It's important to remember you need to keep at least a minimum of five turns of cable on your drum because those turns on your drum is what generates the strength to be able to pull your winch forward. Wire cable is held onto your drum using a very tiny bolt. That is not a load rated bolt and will not hold any force. Anyone new to four wheel driving, I recommend speak to your local four wheel drive club or complete some four wheel drive training. I'm Chris Roberts from Me Mother Four Wheel Drive. Thanks for listening. Good job, boy. Get your head inside here quickly. It's time for four wheel drive TV. The next generation of shock absorbers is here. Leading the way in 4x4 suspension development, Old Man Emu introduces the most advanced and finely tuned shock absorber on the market. Nitro Charger Sport incorporates a new valving system that instantly adapts to all terrain for an outstanding smooth ride and phenomenal control. Backed by a three year 60,000 kilometre warranty, you can trust Nitro Charger Sport, built in Australia for Australian conditions. With nearly 100 years experience in designing and manufacturing heavy duty filtration, Donaldson is one of the most trusted brands in the market and our filters meet or exceed OEM specification. Originally developed for four wheel drives on mine sites, Donaldson's range of four wheel drive filters will perform in even the toughest environment, giving you peace of mind that you are buying the best and the most reliable filter for your vehicle and backed by a full manufacturer's warranty. Donaldson, tough filters for tough environments. When you need your manual gearbox rebuilt, don't start in reverse. Get it geared up right the first time with the team from 360 Gearboxes. As Australia's premium gearbox and diff specialist, 360 use the world's best gears, sharps, bearings and seals. 360 offer a guaranteed and quality changeover and A1 customer service. If your manual is grinding, crunching, sticking or blowing, demand the best 360 Gearboxes, a fast, reliable and high quality rebuild. For more info, visit 360gearboxesdiffs.com.au. I'm Rory Watson and this is my rig. It's a 2005 TD42, one of the last big monsters. I've had it since new and at 5,000 kilometres decided to put a 7 inch lift kit in it, which has been engineered and certified by South Australian Department of Motor Vehicles. I set the car up with a set of light force lights. It's got a roof rack, bull bar, side steps and a tow bar. It's got a few extra little bits and pieces in the suspension to make it work to articulate a bit better. I'm looking towards actually doing a little bit more with the car. We've just recently been back from the high country wouldn't mind going back down to Port Lincoln and Coffin Bay National Park. I'm running at the moment my road tyres, but normally I run a set of Simex centipedes on there for when we go do some harsh four wheel driving. I use the car as a tow vehicle, um, drag my race car around for when we can't get the truck and trailer in. And as my daily driver, even as my work vehicle, often I load the thing up with all my tools and go off on site and get jobs done. Use it for recreational four wheel driving and also hunting as well. If you'd like to join us for our next Your Rig trip, then email myself with your details. Each weekly winner takes home a cap and stubby holder courtesy of all sat phone, an any sharp edge sharpener and scissors thanks to Keesler Knives, a promo pack courtesy of ARB including Forby the plush toy, a travel mug, a Forby drink bottle, the new ARB cap, a pair of emergency travel socks, the latest ARB jacket, and a set of valve caps to bling your rig. There's an ARB Penrith stubby holder, a pen and cap thanks to Berrimer diesel and DP chip, a massive map of Australia, a GDT Simpson desert map, and Travel Atlas, courtesy of HEMA Maps Australia, a Manel Motors stubby holder, a USB rechargeable torch thanks to Nava, 
The History of Land Cruiser DVD courtesy of Terrain Tamer, a U-Fix-It windscreen repair kit and tyre ratchet set. There's a copy of Dirt Cop magazine, South Pacific Bow Hunter magazine and Wild Deer and Hunting Adventures magazine. A set of the Australian design expander pegs, an up and go breakfast replacement courtesy of Sanitarium, a set of four wheel drive TV medium stickers, a stubby of Bundaberg ginger beer and an Australian designed Aussie drink mate. A Black Widow travel mate tyre repair kit or a Donaldson diesel fuel filter kit. The electric blue span set snap strap and it's all neatly packaged up in an ARB cargo gear carry bag. I'd like to say thanks to Miranda and Simon of 4 Drive TV and to all the sponsors that support Miranda and Simon to make this all happen. My family and myself, we have been watching 4 Drive TV since pretty much the get-go. Um, we enjoy every episode. Looking forward to it every Thursday night here in Adelaide. My name's Mark Harrison, I'm from the Australian Mud Racing Association. We're down at Darlston near Wontaggy at a mud racing event. It's our second round for the season and we have a really good lineup. The track's looking good, it's got trimmed up. Definitely a high action track, there's normally a few rollovers, big jumps at their tabletop right near the crowd, so it's really exciting for them. So it's going to be a fast day. We start them off for juniors, they're from 10 to 16, up to a 1.3 litre. Then we have a modified, which are mainly six cylinders at the minute. And then we have the super modifieds of the modified V8s. And some are like a modified car, but they're such an experienced driver. We have them in there. And we have a selection of road registered cars that come on the day. Road registers up to anybody that either wants a trail of their road registered car on the day or drive it here. It's 100 bucks for the day. They can have a passenger. Modifications are from the stock standard car right up to the comp trucks that are registered. The modified classes, they range from the V6s up to the super modifieds running LS1s, 304s, a supercharged 304, and some more stock standard modifieds that actually keep up to them like bitters. The modified ones will have the most action for the day with the aggressive driving style, the traction they get, and the speed that they can carry with their highly modified vehicles. The ones I'd suggest to watch today would be the Hulk. Unleashed. Bitters. I'd say a number of any of them could be up for the challenge. We have Joe, I think he's 62, he has a Terminator which is a 460 big block in the rear mounted Land Cruiser and he's also brought a second car if that breaks down, Mud Runner, there's <laughs> a backup car. Definitely get a good show out of Joey, he normally tips it over or he gets some lots of big air and yeah, he definitely puts on a show for an older guy. The Australian Mud Racing is a non-for-profit club. We have the Dalston Football Ground on our side, so a lot goes back into the community with the upgrades down to the football clubs. We have a number of rounds through the season, and a lot of the money goes back into local communities, kindergarten, CFAs, the Lions Clubs, and anyone else who wants to get on board. A lot of their locals come and do their thing and get money out of it. It's definitely going to be a great day, and I hope you enjoy the action.
Hi, I'm Greg from Superior Engineering. Today I'd like to talk to you about Superflex Radius Arms. Superflex Radius Arms were designed to optimise all available wheel travel from radius arm type suspensions commonly found in land cruisers and patrols. The modified mounting position of the Superflex arm allows the bushes to deflect much further than a factory arm. The reduction in binding in the bushes prolongs the life of the rubber bushes, resulting in less maintenance when driven hard off-road. Due to gaining this addition in wheel travel while forward driving, you will help to maintain forward traction by having all wheels on the ground. There is provision for the fitment of the factory sway bars to retain the standard road dynamics. Superflex arms are constructed from 350 grade high tensile steel. They are CNC machined for precision fitment and can be supplied to suit caster correction on almost any lift vehicle. Superflex arms are a full bolt in replacement and can be easily fitted without any special tools. Nissan Patrol Superflex arms can be supplied as a single passenger side if the vehicle is already fitted with drop boxes. One of the key benefits of a radius arm type suspension is it gives a more torsional rigidity to the differential, often aiding in the sway and body roll of the vehicle. One of the key benefits of the Superflex arm is its upper and lower limits in which it can control the amount of movement across the bushes. The vertical displacement in the new arm reduces binding in the triangulation across both arms. I'm Greg from Superior Engineering. Thanks for listening. Hi there, Max Peterson from Brisbane, driven all the way down here. We've got the Smith & Sons Renovations Extensions Rodeo. It was not a bad performer for its first time out. The driver was probably the most of the problem. Right at the end of the day, we had a few mechanical issues which put us out. Unfortunate, but Tony Waitley and the guys at Love Day put on a pretty good show. It's awesome to sort of get down here and now we're going to rack and pack and tie it all down and, and send it home. Come back with bigger and better truck next time. Thank you for tuning in for another big episode of 4 Drive TV. Remember, if you need further information, jump onto 4WheelDriveTV.com.au. Well, that's it from Simon Christie and the team for this week. But tread lightly, keep it safe, play hard. I look forward to seeing you next week.